OK. Um, so last example. Now, again, guys, we notice this is a hyperbola, right? So first thing I want to do is identify my a squared. No, flip, just flip that over. We're actually not using that right now. Identify your a squared, identify your b squared. Hyperbola, a squared minus b squared, right? a squared e equals 4, a equals 2. b squared equals 16, b equals 4. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. c squared equals a squared plus b squared equals 20. c equals the square root of 20, which can be simplified to? Two. Square root of 4 times 5, square root of 4 would be 2, radical 5, right? That's how quickly, though, we should be able to get to that point. Because in reality, guys, as long as you know a and b, I mean, you're just identifying a squared minus b squared and taking the square roots of stuff. I know the radical still mixes some people up, but if you have questions for that or you get stuck, just come and see me. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Um, the center here, remember, h is always with x, k is always with y. So my center in this case is going to be negative 3 comma negative 2. Now I have enough information to plot. So I find my center, which is negative 3, negative 2. Once I find my center, I label it. Now, the next thing I want to do, since my center is not at the origin, the next thing I'm going to want to do is um, I'm going to want to uh, label a transver my transverse axis. So since my a squared is under my y, did I last do? I did another vertical one last time, did I? Damn. All right, we're doing two in a row. Oh, wh why did I switch those for you guys? Ah, well, all right. Two in a row. You have a vertical transverse axis, correct? OK, so the distance from my center to my vertices is 2. So I'll go up 2, and I'll go down 2. The distance from my, um, distance from my, vertice, or my center to my foci is 2 square root of 5, which I think some, for some people is kind of too confusing. So let's talk about square root of 20. Now again, where is square root of 20? Well, let's think about what we know the square root of. We know the square root of 16, which is 4, and we know the square root of 25, which is 5. So would it make sense the square root of 20 is between 4 and 5? Somewhere. And that's about as close as you need to get, somewhere between 4 and 5. So I'd go up 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, between 4 and 5. There. All right. Uh, now let's go and label these. So my vertices is negative 3. And then I'm basically going um, negative 3, negative 2. But I'm going up or down. I'm going up or down, what, 2? So you'd say plus or minus 2. But we can actually rewrite that as negative 3, 0, and negative 3, negative 4. I would like you to simplify those. Um, right, I mean, I no, but I, you should put them like that. But for the next one, when it's a radical, yes, don't. That's as far as you're going to go. Negative 3, common negative 2, plus or minus 2 squared of 5. Like you're, I don't want you like converting that to a decimal and adding, you know. All right, now to find the asymptotes, remember the equation of the asymptote is y equals, um, I'm just doing that one now, plus or minus a over b times x minus h plus k. So in this case, uh, our a over b, our a is 2, our b is 4. So that's plus or minus 1 half times x minus h, which is really plus 3. And then plus k, which is really the opposite of that, right? So it would be minus 2. You guys see how that kind of gets confusing for people? That's why a lot of times I like writing the k over there. So then they see it's the, that same, yeah. It's the y plus 2, and then you add it over there. Um, that's your equation. Now, to graph this, that's your equation. You can leave it just like that. You don't need to put in slope intercept form or anything crazy. However, if you're actually to graph this and you're going to put this slope intercept form, you'd have to distribute. Combine with fractions. And to me, it kind of seems like most people feel like that'd be too much work, right? So I think the easiest thing to do is just all I'm asking you to do is sketch the graph. So let's just find your covertices, which are at 4 away, along your conjugate axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
And let's just make a box with your co-vertices. Wait, and there's my vertices down there. And now, now I have a general idea where everything goes. Does everybody see? Do you guys see how even though I'm going to ask you for an equation of an asymptote, I think the easiest thing to do is just use the box method to graph the asymptotes. Right? Sometimes it's not, but that's it. That's all I got for you. But I do want you guys to try one problem because guess what? You guys saw in your quiz.